Hello everyone, I'm Drake of the Dragon. Welcome back to Beacon Pines. From this point onward, definitely nothing that we've seen before. Can't go to my dad's grave. Okay. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. Yikes. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Oh, okay. So we all understand our roles. You can count on me. I still think we need more time. This wasn't the original plan. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. We're all in danger now. I, for one, refuse to sit idly. Idly by while that danger persists. Fuse. Okay, okay. Um, you just keep your wits about you. Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. You're right. You can count on me. I just wish we could have made that deal with Eris Valentine. Her resources would have still come in handy. As I said, I had no time to contact her after your call this morning. Plans change. How is Luca holding up? He's fine. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this is all... I know very well what all of this is for. We have no choice. Operation Sparkplug has a new objective. Are we in agreement? The three shared a determined look. Good. We'll reconvene after the festival. The lady who runs the cafe? Beautiful. Oh, she knows. Gran. Why a meeting with Mrs. Fratelli and Mr. Tolliver late at night? They're swinging! Hey, Luca! Ah! <laughs> Donnie scared me. How long have you been there? Just a few minutes. Earlier today, I saw Mr. Tolliver and your gran enter the diner together. When my shift at the newsstand was over, they still hadn't left. So I used the greatest tool of money investigative reporter. Time. When they left, they trailed them here. What do you think they're up to? Whatever it is, they seem organized and determined. They mentioned the festival. Yeah, I heard that too. Has your ground been doing anything different recently? Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out the door. A call from Hiram Tolliver, it seems. She was either furious or terrified. Or both. Luca, be careful out there. I think we might be in the middle of a scoop of a lifetime. I will. Aren't you coming out? No, I'm gonna stay out here for a bit longer. See you, Luca. <laughs> the way she just slowly went down. <laughs> She's so cute. She's probably my favorite design in the game. Or character in general. Okay, what are the uh, kids doing out here? I did it. I changed the sign. Splendid. Did anyone see you? I don't believe so. You were right. It was simple enough to just rearrange the letters. Odd choice for a prank, though. In situations such as these, odd is good. The two boys shared a mischievous grin. <laughs> okay. Can't wait for everyone to see the big reveal. Should be quite memorable. Let's make ourselves scarce for now. Okay. Perennial harvest! Harvesting your perennials since. 
2,000 and something. Oh. Really? There's there's nothing around here for me to get? Okay. Papa! I have yet things to choose from. Luca this should be it. Some tape around the hook. Hey, you never know. Okay, okay, okay. This is the most exciting part of the game, is it not? Is that just paper? Got a bunch of big words written on it. Let's see that. Regret to inform you that your application for property rights with respect to the Beacon Pine CBD and surrounding area has been rejected. Who's that for? Valentine Estate. Good. Good. Huh. Okay. Luca placed a sinker on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. Okay. So there's more than two left. The I thought, silly me. They were all gonna have the same amount of space between them. Ooh, message in a bottle. Malice 80 proof whiskey. A hard liquor for a hard man. Takes a real piece of work to leave something like that lying around. It's clearly a message in a bottle. Okay, well. Never mind then. Nothing to get there. Okay. Ooh, here we go. Rollo? Rollo, are you there? I'm at the treehouse now, Rollo. Mr. Carr said you were all right. What happened out there? Dang it, Rollo, where are you? There. Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. Uh -huh. I've got weapons in here. So you better come out right now. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Yeah. Weapons. <laughs> How could you hurt something that's already dead? Fear gripped Luca's throat. Ah, uh, this is the bully cat. Who are you? What, you don't recognize me? I guess I don't even recognize myself anymore. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. I'm a monster. And now they haunt me like the beast I am. Iggy. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Don't touch me! It's all your fault. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to. I lost control. So you couldn't control yourself for a second, and I get to be like this forever. There must be a way to fix this. Oh? Is he gonna be my savior? Perfect little Luca saves the day. With his positive attitude and the power of friendship. None of this matters. There's no time. They're after me. They chased me all through Weep Wood. I only came in here to hide. Hide from who? Who's after you? Luca! Luca! Rollo? It's not safe. Luca! Rollo, where are you? The treehouse! 
I'm at the treehouse, Rolo. Where are you? No, Luca, the treehouse is unsafe! You idiot! That's clearly what he's saying! <laughs> they said they were going to the treehouse. I was trying to tell you to stay away from the treehouse. Who said they're going to the treehouse? The clipboards! What did I tell you? Those perennial harvest wackadoos are after me. They've been chasing me, yelling questions at me. What sort of questions? They're saying the same stuff they always do, but it's different. Less asking, more threatening. We're gonna figure this out, Aiken. Yeah, well, thanks. Hello? Is anyone present at this arboreal domicile? Luca, what's happening? Don't panic. You stay here and I'll see what they want. Oh, fuck me. Hello, Mr. Van Horn. We would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have time for an informal chat? We will be brief. Your time is valuable to us. Uh... Be down in just a second. Of course, of course, of course, of course. We have a problem. Luca, you gotta get out of there. Who's out there? Is it them? Yeah, it's the clipboards. A bunch of them. How many? Maybe all of them? And yeah, you were right. They're saying the same stuff, but with the creepy knob cranked to ten. Might young Iggy be present? We would love to hear his thoughts. Ron Iggy slumped to his knees. I don't know what to do. I'm just so tired. Luca, what do we do? Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Follow my lead. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC, Ooh. the Mission Control Defense Cannon. Indeed. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Oh! Iggy, there you are. You give us all a heck of a scare. Go away, just leave me alone. Oh, I'm sorry, Iggy, but no can do. Don't worry, though, we're here to help. Help? And why are you chasing me? Luca, can you talk some sense into your pal here? Just look at him, he's not well. What's wrong with him? What did that gunk do to him? Well, that's a pretty honking big question, Luca. All you need to know is that he is sick. He's real sick, Luca. I just need you to let us up there and take care of him. You told me Rollo was okay, but he was back at this place resting. He is! Poor fella just got a little lost. That's a lie! That's a hurtful thing to say, Luca. I thought we were buddies. Why? Because he lets you ramble on like a wackadoo? Nobody likes you, you creep. Her smile faltered. Why don't you pop on down here so we can have a face-to-face? -face? Yelling like this is gonna give us all a heck of a sore throat. And who wants that? Lucas' grip tightened on the MCDC. What did you do to Rolo, you liar? Well, shucks, Luca, the only teeny tiny fib I told you was that he was at home. He is resting, and he is perfectly safe. For now, at least. What happens to him next is up to you, Luca. Look around. You're in quite of a pickle. And I'm the only person in the whole wide world who can help you. You get to decide how this ends. Ooh. Luca's mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? He wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Okay. Oh yeah! Sure! Fucking... Yeah! Fight! Luca drew himself up and 
decided to take the only option they had left. Fight. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Hey, Mr. Kerr. Luther summoned his most insolent demeanor. <laughs> Rollo sends his regards. Hey. That was uncalled for, more than a little rude, and just plain unsanitary. Luca, I really did think we were good pals. What a shame that it's come to this. Kerr turned his back on the two boys. And this. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. Oh, fuck. That escalated quickly. Oh. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. Damn it. I guess we struggle. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never oh. looked back once on the long run home. Okay. Chapter three. Everything's fine. So Rollo didn't get taken in this one. Um, Iggy didn't get disfigured. The next morning, okay. it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Uh, I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. Uh, so that I'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, Rolo had things to do, so I just sort of poked around town. I've set the jam down by the front door. There's two badges to drop off. Mm -hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver at the Bag and Wag. Okay. One to Miss Fratelli at the diner. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, and Mr. Nuncreed. He said he wanted some more. I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a particular interest in my jam. And by jam, I mean my nether regions. There's some extras in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. Okay. Just make sure Fratelli and Tolliver get the ones on top. No problem. Off with you now, while the day is still young. I wouldn't have trusted me with that. So. Hee <laughs> hee. Just a little guy. I love being nosy. Hello, it's Juniper Hartford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simple matter is we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well. We can meet tonight. Huh. Okay. Can I use my walkie-talkie to talk to Rollo or anything? Nope. Can't do crap. Okay. Oh. 
Aw, safe and sound. Okay, sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news, no more chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So what did you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? What else could it possibly be? Rollo. I've got to deliver these into town first. We can catch up after. Ooh, is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is that you speak of. <laughs> Meet me at mission control. Roger that, space cadet. Oh, look at me with the little basket. That's so cute. Oh, hello, buddy. How you doing? Wait, watch your step. Oh, sorry. There was a whole family of beetles here. They've gone missing. I thought they'd just sort of wandered around. Everyone has a home, Luca. Even beetles. Luca checked the soles of his sandals. I think we're okay. It's weird that they're gone. They went missing when festival preparations began. You think the noise scared them away? Something like that. Just watch where you step, okay? Sure, sure, sure. Yes, yes, sure. Of course, yes. Yeah, yeah. You're not moving. Good for you. Mr. Wilder, I trust you have time to chat? Eris Valentine. Oldest of Sharper Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune. Mm -hmm. Had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certainly. What seems to be the problem? Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I couldn't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about the silly festival. Well, yes. That is the news of the day. But there was no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Miss Valentine. My readers are more so interested in this town's future rather than in any one family in particular. There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings-on of my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is dangerous. If you finish that thought, I will make that monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. My apologies. Good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze Damn. and to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Ooh, shit shit. Get dunked on, boy. Still reading. Anger from the past, mistakes not yet made, and a glimmering hope for the future. He carried them all in equal parts everywhere he went. Oh heavens, what a burden to bear! Oh, hey, friend. My favorite one. Hey, Don. Oh. Hi, Luca. What's up? Ah, oh, they got you on jam delivery, eh? Yep. Have you seen a new kid around yet? New kid? Yeah, came in from the big city. Our parents both got jobs here. But get this. One of them is working for William Kerr and Perennial Harvest. And the other one is working for Eris Valentine. And? The Valentines represent Beacon Pine's past, 
perennial harvest has positioned itself as its down future. I am flubbing so many words, I'm really sorry, but I'm struggling to actually see all of the text because of my mic. The screen's kinda low. Must make for some interesting dinner table conversations. I can imagine. They're lesbian spies. That's what they are. Well, if it isn't my favorite little jam runner, I want to marry you. Hey, Miss Fratelli. Look at she you. Forward and pinch Lucas cheek. They're all skin and bones. Is your grand not feeding you? She is. It's just. I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember, but you and her used to help me out in the diner. See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute, running around in your little apron, taking orders. <sighs> the whole situation just breaks my heart, what happened with Eleanor. Ooh. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere yearning to be with you again. Few things in this world could keep a mother from her son. Luca shifted the basket uncomfortably. Oh yes, let's see here. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Ah, oh, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. You tell your grand hello for me, Luca. Will do. Luca squinted at the faded photo of him and his mom at the diner. Memories of that day came flooding back. Ooh. Oh, look at me, little boy. How do you still have a baby and are pregnant? What the heck? I must be just like filling in the blanks because there's no way. I'm ready to help, Mama. All right, little buckaroo. It's up to us to feed these folks while Mrs. Fratelli is away. I've got to deal with the inventory before I can start cooking. Do you think you can handle taking some orders in the meantime? Yes, Mama. Hi, Roxy. Luca? I'm helping. Wow, hopefully your work ethic will rub off on Rolo. How can I get you? I'm not really feeling like a burger. How about a chicken sandwich with bacon on top? Chicken sandwich, bacon on top. Chicken sandwich, bacon on top. Oh. Chicken sandwich with bacon on top. Nice. Here you go. I call it the love me tenders. <laughs> Cute. Yes, yes. Okay, buddy. Not reading all of that. From Gus. Should I come back? Oh. Nice stack of cold cuts topped with a pile of sloppy chili. Okay. Cold cuts and chili. Okay. What an order that is. Here you are. The hot and cold. <laughs> Drunk the way it's Jeff. Jeff slapped the table and gave Luca a toothy grin. What the fuck is Jeff? <gasps> Okay. Sweet burger with grilled cactus. Okay. If the heart wants what it wants. Yeah, boy. I got gotcha. you. That seems like some textures that should not be mixed together. The sweet and stabby. Okay. Looks like we're missing a few things. Okay. 
Okay, so there's two, like, little memories to be part of. Oh. Okay, he wants to be left alone. Oh. Opening speech. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not cut out for being a mayor or a public speaker, he never really chose it. What do I do to his family for their legacy? Which sounds like a heavy burden. Oh, I bet he's just gonna make a real mess of things, speaking from the heart. Um, I don't actually know where the other guy is. Going. Oh, okay. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More mm. accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Hello? <laughs> ah! <With a> yelp, <laughs> Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ah, uh, no bother, no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. I see you have something for me? Yeah, Gran had some jam I'm supposed to give to you? He leaned in a bit further. Jam? Yeah, these ones on top. She wrote your name on them. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Ah, yes! The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me! forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. I shall put it on my store shelves post-haste. Okay, I should finish my deliveries. He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. <laughs> you are not good at this spy stuff, dude. Really not. Oh, am I gonna have to sit through the whole thing again? No! Okay, good. Okay. Um, somehow I feel like Tolliver, in his infinite wisdom, probably left something that he wasn't supposed to in my basket. Oh, so cute and so disturbing at the same time. Kato okay. motioned to the book in front of him. <laughs> okay. Nature abhors a vacuum. What a great line from this. Cuties. You're a disturbing piece of shit, but I gotta get this jam to you. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Yeah, you wish she dropped them off herself. Also, he was probably the guy in the mask. I don't know why it would be him, but he just feels like it was him. Nuncreed snatched the basket from Luca. Oh, what a piece of shit! Holding on to the basket till he sees her again? Absolute dick. Anchovies or pineapple? What? Huh? Don't think. Just answer. Pineapple. Why? How old are you? Twelve? Perfect. Follow me. Who are you? 
<laughs> Anyone ever tell you you ask too many questions? Just try to keep up, okay? Okay, damn. What just happened? You were just claimed by a girl. Oh, hello. Hey, what a crazy coincidence. Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this. His favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple. Oh. Beck locked eyes with Luca. Mm -hmm. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. Nelly and Ilona. Oh, Ilona is ethereal. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh yeah, Beck told me all about you. It already feels like we've known each other for years. So you can both stop obsessing about me making friends. Oh darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles. Well, one down, four to go, I guess. What Nelly means is we just want this move to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been friended. This calls for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. Dinner? Wow, another coincidence. I actually already asked him and he said he would love to. It's just wonderful. In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. And that's how you make friends. <laughs> wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My moms are great and all, but they can be a bit much sometimes. Our house is a little cottage next to the big mansion place. Yes! Wait, you live on the Valentine Estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me by the big creepy gate. Don't be late. Or oh, I'm back to square one on this whole friend's grift. <laughs> great, see you there. Okay. Okay, well, I gotta meet Rolo first, I think. Come on. Can't possibly get stuck on the gate every time. And I will. Oh. <laughs> oh, Rolo's not here. It's the morning! How can I possibly be expected to just go to dinner already? Oh my god, okay. I'm just going straight to Beck then. Okay. Why would I meet her there? I have nothing else going on. Oh, hello, dude. And what's so good about it? <laughs> Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. <laughs> Both of these are garbage, exactly. Jeff has a wisdom about him. For sure. Telephone booth is a secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Oh, shit. Oh there, little buddy. What brings you to this neck of the woods? Oh, I was just wandering around a bit. Wandering? How wonderful. Children and their wonderful wandering. Oh, to be young. Anyways, I can't let you pass just now. Top secret business that away. Mr. Kerr winked with a wry smile. Oh, I'm just yanking your chain. Perennial Harvest is just making a. He gave Luca an energetic thump on the shoulder. Better head home now. Our harvest awaits. You're so creepy! My god! Hey. 
Oh, so who all lives in that house? Eris and Gus Valentine grew up there, and Solomon moved in a few years back. That creepy little kid in the vest? That sounds like the one. So just three people live in that huge thing? But a bunch of shady stuff happens all the time in a place like that. Not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring? Pretty much. What a waste. My mom said that it used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the foul harvest. Okay, that's like the fifth time somebody mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. That was a very quick day that I just had. Most kids would have just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? Well, you look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great, whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle Back to that. The long breath. Then gave a firm nod. Here goes nothing. Chapter four. Okay. Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Mm. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. I, I sense some shit in there. So, Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I live with my grandma. Over on the other side of the river. Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Heck? Manners. It's alright. My dad passed away in an accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Oh dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Like, missing missing? Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it, it was good. Um, very good. Normally, we'd have put more effort into Ilana dinner. nervously gestured toward the boxes. We aren't fully settled in, and Beck had mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck. I'm sorry, Luca, this boob has us all a little tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. No, it's fine. So, Beck said that you moved here for work? Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Hmm. How? I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time we're here for work. Nellie won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her newest lead researcher of deep engineering. She makes it sound more impressive than it is. I'm just happy I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial Harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture to something more useful than sprinkling water and excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nelly means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. 
some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue their dream. You swore you didn't. Beck slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Oof. Hey, Luca. How about some dessert? I actually have to meet my friend Rolo soon. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around here. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you all for the pizza. It was really good. See you at the festival, Beck. Hmm. Wait up. I'll walk you home. Okay. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. Oh. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. <laughs> oh, Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble or break. Let's say break. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmer- Shimmering in the treetops. <laughs> Sorry. Sure, you can meet Rollo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rollo I'd tell him Luca about- stopped himself mid-sentence. Promised to tell him what? Spit it out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. If there's a juice secret, you gotta tell me. Okay. You can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah. Luca saw Beck skulking by the gate. So you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate. Blooming mansion, rich, reclusive owners. It even smells shady. Beck grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. <laughs> Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. Oh. What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide. Ooh, that's Eris Valentine. She talking to? Shh. I expect you to return that suit in working order. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. Couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now this is what I was talking about. Beck's voice was an excited whisper. Robber shady stuff. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when this all inevitably fails, I will deny everything? I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I cannot wait to see the look on that rube cur's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. There's one thing I've learned. It's that change is painful. I was expecting shady, but that's just flat out supervillain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing the all of this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask, hair pushing out from all corners. Family. <gasps> Grandmama! A chill ran down Luca's spine, his vision blurred. 
Vex stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. Oh, an answer I can certainly respect. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. <laughs> yeah, she did a great job. I have no idea who it is under there. Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need lessons in arousing suspicion. And gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. And so they're pretending to be working together with the perennium harvest quo, but in fact they just start biding their Chapter time five. until something to reveal what they've been doing and that they're what still good. Blah blah blah. Have? Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. Okay. What's wrong? It looks like you've seen a ghost. Why were you so scared of that old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was your gran. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. Okay, okay. Suspicious dealings. Oh, would you look at the mushrooms that are glowing in the dark. God. For the last time, there is nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotting our eyes and crossing our T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. <laughs> the clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, <laughs> then broke into laughter as they walked away. Yeah, they sure seem like a hoot. Ah! No, I don't want to talk to you. Yes, I do. Hi, Mr. Nancrete. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks you to hear your thoughts, give him a good hard bop right in the kisser. Oh, Grant just tells me to keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you'd better run along home now. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. I'm not on my own, I've got this stranger next to me. Oh boy, are you still reading your book by the fountain? Are you prepared to live with the truth? How very ominous. Okay, better get the treehouse. Never mind. Ooh, the same drink. Decaf cappuccino with extra foam. Hmm. Okay. Her and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. Mm -hmm. Coming together nicely. The mayor gave a half-hearted shrug. Mm. Oh. Okay. Kerr 
locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. Okay. William, why are you doing all of this? Never felt he needed a compelling reason to throw a party and just a festival, all of this. There's gotta be a hundred down on their luck towns out there. Why is Perennial Harvest so interested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agriculture business? Seeds. Yep, little bundles of potential. With a glimmer in his eye, Kurt gestured grandly toward the horizon. You treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here. Undoubtedly, the seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge, under right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mayor Valentine. I love how we just like listen into people's conversations and they don't acknowledge us whatsoever. He's a creepy piece of shit. But we already knew that. Oh. Roll, he's Rollo. Lots of energy. Funny even when he's not trying to be... Things have been tough for, tough for his family since the fall harvest. It's kind of a long story. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. <laughs> it was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers love it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Uh, most everyone in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. <laughs> around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died. On and something changed. Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water or air or soil. Nobody knows, but all the crops died. And everyone blamed the Valentines. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. Next year the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of a crapshoot what happens. No one knows why. For some reason, their farm was hit harder than others. Hmm. Things have gotten better since the perennium harvest came to town. First th thing they did was give the town deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels one town over for a week while they decontaminated the groundwater. Huh. They did some fishy shit, didn't they? I didn't pick anything up, did I? Why am I even... Luca gently bit first. Yeah, yeah. Back I go. Okay, let's go. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rollo. Oh. I see my reputation precedes me. Oh. Welcome to Mission Control. Oh, waggled his head with pride. Oh. You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks. Hey Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah? While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. Nice. <laughs> oh no. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. I mean, that's pretty brilliant for a kid. Lavish. What is that supposed to do, though?
Come on. Damn it. Shouldn't be this hard aiming. <laughs> get all this junk in the first place. There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. <laughs> nice. So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust a new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Oh, Luca, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine Warehouse. Um, Luca sucked in a long breath. Here we go. So, like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe there were squatters? I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? Grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go when I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way home, Beck and I saw Eris Valentine meeting with Gran. Wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Lola let out a low whistle. And they weren't there for an idle chit chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit, and then you saw your own gran in the same suit talking to Aris Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this sounds kind of awesome. When Luca shot back a look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your gran and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask gran was wearing wasn't damaged. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your gran is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since he moved in. Moved in? Gran isn't from here? No. She came a few months back to take care of me after... After his mom went missing. Did you know your ground before? Not really, no. It's been years since I'd seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your ground is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. Hmm. Hmm. We could say the same thing about your family. But you're right. Luca, your grand is hiding something. And Falwe says folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my grand really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Grand's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear. And we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Chapter 6 Secret Lair Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. 
I think I may have made a correct choice here. That's actually progressing the game. I walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. Aww. What time is it? Oh, I'm so cute in my jammies. Could have stayed in them. Anything around here? Anything at all? Nope. Who the hell is trying to force the door so much? You two. Rolo, what on earth is that? Mm -hmm. That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear. Yeah, whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes mm -hmm. as Rolo strutted across the room. If I were Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. Uh -huh. He coughed as a mm -hmm. veil of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Come on, let me explore! Let me look at things also. Burn the evidence. Think of the mounds of documents lost to Ash. Is there anywhere Gran doesn't want you to go? Yeah, the closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. And I have no idea where the key is. If it is really important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who's ever thought I'm gonna take this important thing and huck it in a bush? <laughs> True. Maybe something out of the ordinary. She is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway, I can't reach the a latch. Of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Mm. All right, Rolo. It is your time to shine. Ah, oh, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed Before with... Finish, Luca scrambled up Rolo's back. <laughs> hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs some sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. <laughs> Stop complaining and hold still. Okay. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With yes. the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. Mm -hmm. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Anticlimactic? <laughs> yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh, hey. Let me just yank this random teacup and... On one of the teacups. It slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire huh. hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Well, well, well. Seems like your grand's been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds and superheroes. Hmm. Yeah, we're about to find out which one she is. Okay, okay. More of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Okay, 
Let me look around. Caution explosive and jam jars. Enough jam to feed the whole town. Incendiary jam. Okay. Dolo <laughs> casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar and ink. Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Oh. Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. Okay, okay. This is Bocelli. Last night I used the disguise Eris provided to scout the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Whatever it is can't be good. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. Mm. For a long moment, he just stared at it. Oh, it's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Huh. Swiped the folder from the drawer and began leaping okay. through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Mm. <laughs> the pre-unit scholar in dense document. Uh, he stopped at sorry, the page I don't feel like reading all of it. You might get mad at me, but it's so much um, dialogue between them all. And, uh, it's, yeah, not super important stuff. Okay. Follow-up examination of Terrace Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. It's similar to symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Whitby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Up with heightened surprise. Mm. Okay, creepy. Mr. Nuncreed, that's Joseph. Rollo's finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Willby claims the tap water at his home had been contaminated, perhaps environmental. Lab results only raise more questions. Mm -hmm. Rollo scanned through several more pages. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terrace's condition follows close behind. Exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough, I need to take matters Luca, into my own hands. Staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Nola rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luke, I think that's the only one. Okay, so dad got... Dad got got. Because he was looking into... Um, the, the, the things? <laughs> Take matters into his own hands. I'm assuming at this point, um, perennial harvest was already in town. Luca slammed the drawer shut. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, mm -hmm. interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Who's your grand serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. <laughs> She's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on here, both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark that has been crossed out. Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. 
We don't know what any of this means, but it's probably not good. Okay. Nothing else for me to see, I think. They crowded around a worn-down old map of Beacon Pines. Okay. Entrance to town. Rollo carefully traced the path with his finger. We he tried to down at the end point. Town Square. That's the fountain in the middle of town. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives over there. So it's not hiding treasure, a real bummer. Willow, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? Did you say go? Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's probably she's not going to do that. Come on. Luca looked up from the map. Beck flicked off the light. Mhm. Mm and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. It's just grand and she's going to Talk the about it. Of their necks following each footfall. Mm hmm Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Oh, oh hello? The final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. No, no, no. Anyone down the there? The kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, uh -oh. the man's voice punctuated every new step. Thump. You. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not here to hurt anyone. I'm just here to help. Just. At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Oh, 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 oh. Guess it's nothing. Shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rolo, don't. It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken coop! With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. From the dark corner, they saw something move. Mm. Come on. We should just kill that person. The pressing his fingers to the man's uh. neck. You sure clobbered him good, Rollo. He's knocked As out Beck cold. Flipped back on the light. Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Mm-hmm. Mr. Tolliver. Chapter 7. The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. Oh, boy. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled <laughs> in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain, they couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After yeah. some deliberation, it was decided. Good cop, chill cop. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. Okay. I think I am going to end this one here. My sincerest apologies if this video isn't as fun or anything. Um, I'm just like going through some stuff. Um, some big things happening this week so my mind is a little elsewhere but I did still want to play more of the game and hopefully there'll be at least another video this week after that thing I've got goes by uh, not to sound ominous about it or anything it's just a little bit of a big deal for me so I'm very anxious about it 
sorry that I'm babbling. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. It would mean so much to me. Hope you're enjoying Beacon Pines. I definitely really want to see where this goes and how the story unravels. So I'll see you super soon with the next one. Bye for now.